Hey, what's up? I'm Dave. I'm Dean. I'm Joe. And I'm Tyler from Theory of a Dead Man. You are watching The Interview Queen. Hey, everybody. It's The Interview Queen, Alicia Atute here, and I'm very excited to be chatting with Theory. Hello. Hello. How are you all doing? Very good. Awesome. Very good. We got up early this morning, but now it's like the afternoon, so it's almost bedtime. <laughs> is, that, is that the way you look at it? You're just trucking through? I was going to say yeah. it's almost breakfast. It is almost breakfast. That's true. That's true. Do you find when you do these press junkets and when you're on tour, like your habits are just completely thrown out the window? You have no schedule. It's just kind of whenever you can get breakfast or sleep, that's when it happens randomly? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. We, yeah. When we're on tour, our schedule is like each guy's different, but. Like it's, it's the routine. It's, it's the routine is like I, I eat at the same time. Sound check is the same time. The shows. Ty you know, microwaves like, his eggs at the same time every day. <laughs> it is. They it's like in the microwave at the same time. Every Dean day. gets up and puts on the pre-football, yep. whatever it is. It's Pre-season. everything is set. So when we get yeah, when we have a couple of days of press, we're kind of all like, what? what's going what's on? What's happening? Yeah. yeah. Even just sleeping in a hotel, I find is tricky now. We're so used to the bus. Yeah. And then all the bus dro- dropped us off last night and I had to go into a hotel room. I'm like, oh, this what bed is, is so this? big. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing here? I like how you mentioned the microwaved eggs there because I feel like that's something people are either totally on board with or super iffy about. I feel like even <laughs> the way you said it before, you're like, hmm. Yeah, yeah I need so to leave the bus when he makes it clearly. eggs. But are all of you guys on board with that or totally just not? It's funny because sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes uh, he pulls them out and there's egg guts on top of the microwave door and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, it, Tyler's yeah. a responsible uh, microwaver, so if, if it's a mess, he cleans it up. It's good. So I have no yeah. problems. It's true. Can't do anything about that smell, though. No, that never goes away. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, a huge congratulations is in order as Say Nothing is officially out. First yes. record in three Thank years. You. So it must feel pretty amazing that you can finally share some new music with everybody. For sure. You know what's crazy is the time goes so fast. We were in the studio like almost a year ago making this. It's yeah. just like, what? That's nuts. Mind is blown. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yes, we're excited. One of my favorite tracks off of the album, both musically and lyrically, is Ted Bundy because ah. psychology, <laughs> that kind of stuff just it absolutely fascinates me. I remember reading books about that growing up and now with yeah. all the documentaries. Um, so is that something that's interested you for a while um, or what kind of sparked the idea to write about that topic? Um, well, I love all I love to read uh, the uh, true crime novels. A lot of those serial killer stuff. But the song actually isn't about Ted Bundy. It's just, I, I just picked a title. I think there was that Ted Bundy, uh, it was on Netflix or something. Right. Yeah, the documentaries. Yeah. yeah, which was so good. So I think that's where the idea came from for the, the song title. But the, it, the, the song is just about being in a relationship with someone that just has no no social skills, has no love, no, nothing. Incapable. Incapable of love. I thought, who is the... Ted Bundy. The right. Who's the epitome? <laughs> yeah. And you know what's Who crazy? Is it? Like, and then you turn huh. the TV on. Yeah. And so many is. people like that song. It's crazy. We were talking. Yeah. It's like every single person is like, people text me or something like, Ted Bundy. I'm like, mm, interesting. Well, I feel like that was such a big thing over the last few months with the documentaries. New books are out there. TV yeah. series. Uh, so when I heard it, I genuinely thought that you were writing directly about him because it's, it seems to be the case. But the fact there's that whole other side of it um, that is relatable. That's also a pretty cool feat. Yeah, was, and it gives the song a little more depth as well, not just uh, something I'm just writing about a serial killer. Right. You know? <laughs> There's I a little fe- bit more to it. <laughs> yeah, I always felt like the music reminded me of Ted Bundy, too, just because I watched those things, and he was such a two-face. Like, he was, like, yeah. this super charming yeah. guy, and the song has, like, this really sort of, uh, you know, uh, chorus that is kind of shiny and, yeah. and nice, and then this dirty, dark, nasty verse. There's a verses, lot hiding underneath Yeah, it. and I, yeah. I love the sort of the two sounds to the song aside from discussing the originals here you recently covered bullet to the head by rage against the machine Uh, and that was absolutely sick i loved hearing that so i was curious though if you could have any band put their spin on your songs who would you love to see do so rage against the machine (laughs) (laughs) do do a little switch there (laughs) yeah who would it be who would be cool playing us that would be cool Uh, that's a good question that's a good question yeah, we uh, we grew up in a lot of grunge stuff. I mean, um, yeah, I like Pearl, Pearl Jam would be pretty cool. I think I, I, you know Eddie Vedder was very close. Him and Jim Morrison were very close to my voice. I can never pull off any like Robert Plant or even like Lane Staley or even Chris Cornell was like my favorite singer, but I can't sing like that. So Pearl Jam <laughs> would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Down the line, everyone agrees that I like. I, it's just a little head nod. Pearl Jam's one of my faves. I think yeah, that'd be pretty okay. cool. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. 
Now, on this new album, you do cover some fairly serious topics, not mm. only the uh, serial killer we were yeah. talking about, but um, no, there's a, there's a lot of depth to this record. <clears throat> and apparently, a lot of this stuff is stuff you wanted to cover in the past, but you couldn't really bring yourself to it. So what changed over time where you figured, this is the album, we are going to do this? It was RX. RX was a huge song for us on Wake Up Call. And we got, I think, just the feedback from fans and people that were maybe struggling with uh, opioid addiction and we were like, man, you know what? We're actually we're helping people here. We were uh, we raised money for um, Shadowproof, which is an organization that helps people with the opioid addiction. And so, you know, all of a sudden, there's like more dimension to just being in a rock band and having fun. It was like, you know, we can actually help people with music. So, in a sense, uh, that I think opened the door doors. Dave used the word in, 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 in infected by, uh, you know, in a in a in a positive way. Yeah, it was infectious. infectious. You start seeing people come up to you and say, thanks for singing about something that's hard to, for people to talk about. Yeah. And it's cool because you're like, man, what else can we do to Right, it help opens people? the door. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, such a genuine and lovely way to actually start wanting, you know, opening well, that door in your minds to things. It's funny because, I mean, I think if, you, you know, we look, you look at bands like U2 who have been vocally or even Rage Against the Machine, who, you know, they're the kind of band that speaks out against injustices and stuff. I think if you asked us five, six, seven years ago if we would be singing about things like that, we probably would say no. But then all of a sudden you're just, you find yourself in this world and you're looking around going man some stuff is weird right now things right. are weird time to talk about them <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing it. just that yeah. so kudos to you guys for that <laughs> and one of the cool things about being in a band is you are always in such close corners and you guys have been for many years now and of course with that comes learning other people's you know their great parts and then some of the things that might get on your nerves a little bit so have you learned any pet peeves about one another over time uh -huh. it's a hot Slam. topic of discussion lately uh, what are you trying to start you know it's <laughs> interesting when the tour <laughs> when the tour starts when the tour starts everyone's like oh no oh, good to see you so man good to great see to see everybody mm, oh i love it you're the best and after two weeks it's just like Who's not putting away something rather <laughs> slamming I've the door? I've realized. I've realized what it is. Is it's not. It has nothing to do with like how long. And it's exactly has to do with uh, the, there's a mid tour lull. So it doesn't matter if it's a two month tour or, right. or two week tour. And the two week tour at the one week point, everyone will hit the lull and start getting grumpy. <laughs> Uh, but it's just you start to understand that that's how it works. And I've been listening to a lot of complainers this last few weeks, and I've decided to use my energy for, uh, you know, sort of instead of just complaining about things, actually working on making things better around the bus. <laughs> that's not what you said the other night. <laughs> I feel I like there's a, un a lot of underlining little notes in that. Uh. Dave said to me the other night, he's like, you know what, Ty? You can't beat him. Join him. <laughs> well, that's, what that's for one person in particular. <laughs> Changing it up a little bit for the camera. Eh? <laughs> that's just for one person in particular. Okay, any, anything else? He's got a target around? on his back. <laughs> well, I think because we're doing this Canadian tour right now, and it's been miserable, snowy weather. So it's also 11 of us on this bus, and we can't get off the bus can't go out and you know have our personal space right. and personal time so that's adding a bit to it yeah i imagine yeah. you go a little bit crazy after a couple of days a little cabin fevery yeah <laughs> exactly. you know what i don't actually just to say i don't actually have any pet peeves for any of these three guys to be honest with you and that's the truth i think what is i think it's those little things like they say like weather or uh just uh like things in the bus that just you know, bug somebody and they get kind of mad and it sets somebody else off. But it's not actual like personal traits that bother right. me about these guys. So that I think that, and I think that's the trick and the key to actually having us be a band for you know almost twenty years yeah. and right. still get along perfectly fine. You don't deep down actually yeah. hate each other. No, I don't know. Really I don't hate That's a great thing to have. Yeah. It's a lot of yeah. respect among yeah. everybody. We've been, we've lucked out too with the uh, with crew. We can tell pretty much right away if we get a new crew guy if he fits in to right. our to our click. You know, and, you know, uh, guys have been able to kind of find their way and, you know, because we're quite lighthearted and, and, and uh, 
everyone gets along and has fun. And yeah, you know, once in a blue moon, we'll get a, a new crew guy comes in, and it's like this guy does not fit. He doesn't, <laughs> doesn't last long. Well, so yeah. I wanted to ask the question because even coming. Where into do I put my room, bowflex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're even fired. Into this room, you guys were helping with with the chairs, and we we're talking about wrestling and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, you guys really are very lighthearted, it's just like how you come across in the other interviews. So I was like, this could be a little spanner in the works, a little fun one to throw in there. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. you know, and uh, it, it's interesting too because. Uh, like we were in Winnipeg, which is Joe's hometown, and I remember the early days with Joe when he was the new guy. You know, he got picked on. We would <laughs> pranks. <laughs> then we do something where like filled. So we fill your strawberry bunk shortcake with balloons or something. You wrap or, my bunk with short strawberry shortcake. Wrapping paper. Wrapping paper. You put um, caution tape. A yeah, night, a, a night light, like a glow night light in. Yeah, and then yeah. caution tape my pillow and my wallet and my laptop. And we caution and taped then, you in to the. Then, yeah, and then filled my <laughs> my filled me into my bunk while I was sleeping in the middle of the night with we jammed balloons, balloons in there. And then caution tape my bunk shut. So I and then you guys. Uh, you know, fire, 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 yeah. and fire, 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 <laughs> and I couldn't get out. I like stuck the, to the table. Like, it's the official and initiation. The on, and then there was balloons everywhere, and I'm like, I don't understand. I blame oh crew. Gosh. I don't think we came up with that. Oh, it's definitely they, hairy. They carry it. They definitely <laughs> carry it. Well, you survived yeah. it. I mean, Congratulations, yeah, I made it too, yeah. you're here. Yeah, because yeah, you have to grow a, you know, a, th- uh, a thick skin. It's, it's. And you know, and some people don't have as thick of a skin. So you know, we've after years we've matured and understand that you can't poke people till they snap anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so. you, you came in just on the cusp of that ending. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's probably some moments that you wanted to. Well, I briefly mentioned wrestling there, and it was really cool to hear that you guys are actually into it. You went to a show oh, yeah. not too long ago. So I was curious if you could have your own in-ring gimmick. What would your persona be? Oh, we all each have our own superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so what is I can't remember what mine is. I Joe's is something with electronics either. or something. Joe would be like electronic man or something, and he would yeah, like I hit buy people the with one, a computer over the head. Catchy. I buy the one laptop or the one phone that is you know a billion of made, and I buy the one that is different than everybody else's, and it yeah. doesn't work at all. Yeah. So you just you'd have to your move would be have something to do with like all of their devices would freeze. Yeah. Oh, no, he would he would he would. All the lights would go out, <laughs> and then the lights would come back on. And Joe, he's one, there. two, three, <laughs> he's pinned <laughs> him. Oh, what happened when the lights were out? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we all have our things. I don't know what mine is. Dave's is like, I don't know. It's probably, I don't know how it would work. Toxic uh, sweat, sweat and stuff. Yeah, That's oh, gross. Toxic sweat. Acidic, acidic yeah. sweat. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I, maybe, I, maybe I, maybe I, maybe I reach into my belt. Throw oh, some God. sweaty, uh, <laughs> sweaty driplets in their face. It's really disgusting. But where, where did you decide to all get these superpowers? We just didn't decide to get them. They, uh, they were, oh, sorry, you were they were given to them. us right. just by being on the road for so long. Yeah, you, like when my guitar. You know, the same things happen to the same people. Like after a show, my guitar tech uh, the next day sees my guitars, <laughs> my strings are rusty. You know, he says, yeah. What is yeah. going on with your what saliva? Like you know, what's coming on? Acidic sweat. Your, your sweat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, acidic sweat or something. He says. Can anyone remember what Tyler's was? Or? Yeah, what was Ty's uh, special? He has a couple. He never... Uh, oh, he's, uh, I mean, I'm a he's mute man. He's mute man. He can talk and, and request things on the rider, and they just never come. They never That's true. Yeah. <laughs> nobody hears him. It's like, hey, can I get... Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, I just need to get this one thing on the rider for me. Can I get some cough drops? And then everyone's like, oh, I didn't get uh, the bro- my whiskey. Did <laughs> <laughs> you get to my Stella Artois? Beers show up. You're like, what? And then all just... everyone shows up. I'm like, did you, did you happen to get my halls? <laughs> Oh, what? No. Oh. Did you ask for something? Oh. You asked for something? Tomorrow. I'm like, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I, don't so I don't know. I don't know what I don't know how that's going to work in the ring. Oh, that's going to work in the ring. would be, but uh, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe you just sneak out when the lights are down and <laughs> take out the guy Joe's fighting. <laughs> You're asking me to tag team. That, yeah. That'll work, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I do want to say thank you so very much for hanging out today. I yeah, appreciate having you. you guys on. Our pleasure. Thank you very much. Everybody, this has been Theory. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check them out and their brand new record, Say Nothing, and hit up aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. See you next time. Bye-bye.